Good morning. Today is the 8th day of January and we've got the Daily Post Scriptures Thoughts and Ideas for you that we hope will be helpful and uplifting through this day. The scripture with which we begin is from Proverbs 17 and verse 9. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. If we're reading the Bible in here today, Genesis 20, 21 and 22, and Matthew 6, verses 19 to 34 are the targets. The thoughts of the day. Enthusiasm releases the drive to carry you over obstacles and adds significance to all you do. If not us, who? If not now, when? Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. The motivational thought for the day, strong lives are motivated by dynamic purposes. And on this day, in 1310 on this day, the Great Frost began in London and the Thames River froze over so thickly that they were able to light bonfires on it. In 1835, the U.S. national debt was zero for the first and only time in history on this day. In 1974, gold hit a record $126.50 for an ounce in London. And in 1985, Japan launched the Sakagaki space probe to Halley's Comet. In 1996 on this day, a blizzard buried the eastern USA, causing at least 50 deaths. The personal story of the day is entitled Almost Done. Done can be a nice word. Sometimes I write the word do on a list and then I later enjoy going back and adding two letters and making it done. It's a nice word if it stands alone. When it begins with un, as in undone, or is preceded by needs to be done, or not quite done, the word is not so nice. Almost done can be encouraging or discouraging. The almost can indicate that it is either soon to be completed or that it is remaining incomplete. Too often a job is incomplete. The finishing touches are undone. That happens when everything from home renovations to repainting to yard work and unfortunately with obedience. Our spiritual lives too often have areas of incomplete obedience. Israel was given the promised land with specific instruction to get rid of all the idols and places of idolatry. Yet, repeatedly, in the Old Testament, we read statements such as one found in 2 Kings verse 3 of chapter 12, quote, the high places, however, were not removed, unquote. The places that were allowed to remain often became an enticement, entrapping the people in false worship practices. That is why God wanted them removed, so they would not pull people into sin. In a similar way, we can keep things in our homes and lives that God wants removed. We can do most of what God wants, but stop short of getting it done completely. Our obedience is incomplete, not fully done. And when Satan uses those things that remain undone 
to tempt and trap us. Wise thoughts and some things to incorporate into our daily practices, one suspects. The devotional thoughts of the day, the first, false wisdom in the scripture from Romans chapter 6 verse 23 with references from James 1 verses 13 to 15 and Genesis 3 verses 1 to 24. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Anyone who has ever spent much time around children has experienced the frustration of their disobedience. Why do they keep getting biscuits out of the jar when they know I can see them and they know they will be at least reprimanded or punished? One exasperated mother asked her son. Because I want the biscuits, was his honest reply. We may develop more subtle methods of disobedience as we get older, but our basic reason for sinning against God is usually the same. There is something we want, and we think that maybe this time we'll get away with it, or we simply feel too weak to defeat the problem. Our verse today has strong words to describe the consequences of following our own desires apart from God. James has set up a contrast between two ways that we can choose to live our lives. As he has described in earlier verses, we can persevere in faith, receive wisdom from God, and ultimately obtain eternal life. See verse 12. Or we can follow our own desires, sin against God, and ultimately receive the consequence of death. See verse 15. When the choice is spelled out in black and white, it seems obvious that we would want to choose life. The problem comes when our own desires present themselves to us as wisdom or couched some other way. This was the case with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. See Genesis chapter 3. As the serpent tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, she rationalized to herself that indeed this must be the right choice. After all, the fruit was tasty, attractive, and would make her wise. See Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. But her desire blinded her to the reality that eating this fruit contradicted a direct command of God. Wise to keep these uh, cautions and advices in our minds. The second thought, God removes kings. Scripture from Daniel 2, verses 20 and 21. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Daniel realized that even powerful dictators like King Nebuchadnezzar are no match for the omnipotent, omniscient God of the universe. Though they swagger in their own self-importance, the time comes when God removes them and raises up others to take their place. As the seasons of nature come and go, so even the most authoritarian leaders pass from the scene. Though they may seem to hold the power of life or death over millions, they themselves are subject to the desires of him who holds their lives in his hands. The pages of history are filled with individuals who have either denied or defied the God of heaven and earth. Yet without exception, they have been confronted with the realization that they were only mortal and posed no real threat to God. While they confidently basked in the power of their independence, God retained the ability to lift them or to cast them down. Do not fear those who mock God. They have no more power than 
that which God will allow. When you hear someone denying God, remember that it is only divine grace that keeps that person from destruction. If God were not so good, atheists would have no opportunity to talk. The facts of the day. The human brain has a storage capacity of 100 trillion bits of information, give or take a few million, equal to the information contained in 500,000 or half a million sets of the Encyclopedia Britannica. The whites of eggs and the deadly venom of rattlesnakes contain the same chemical constituents and in the same proportion. But you can still make meringues and pavlovas out of egg whites. The closing thought for the day, Lord, please let me add to the church. I want to save a life. Thank you for joining us today. And we do hope that you'll come back and see us tomorrow for some more uplifting and edifying scriptures and thoughts and ideas. In the meantime, may the Lord bless your day. Bye for now.